Hello, my name is Dr. Edward Nash. I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor, and I'm here to talk to you about an exciting new treatment option called stem cell therapy. Stem cell therapy is revolutionizing the way we treat problems of the spine and all the large joints, such as shoulders, hips, and knees, where we find osteoarthritis affecting millions of Americans. In a nutshell, regenerative therapy is harnessing the body's ability to heal itself and focusing that where the patient has pain. Regenerative therapy is based on recruiting cells that we have in our own system to go to the area where the pain is located. For example, if your knee joint is causing pain, you've got decreased arthritis, you've been told you have bone on bone arthritis, we inject the regenerative medicine which is comprised of stem cells and growth factors. They then will recruit your body's natural healing cells to that area to begin healing cartilage defects, improving the blood supply, and reducing inflammation. Let's talk about the myths regarding stem cells. Many people are concerned, of course, about where does it come from. Uh, back in the 90s, there was a lot of controversy about stem cell research that was uh, based on leftover embryos from fertility clinics. Fortunately, none of those are the case now. The FDA has approved three sources um, to treat patients with stem cell and growth factors. There's your own bone marrow, there's your fat tissue, and then there is amniotic fluid derived stem cells. Amniotic fluid derived stem cells is what we have found to be the most effective, uh, the most biologically active stem cells. Unfortunately, as we age and mature, our own stem cells are less active. Um, so when it comes to the amniotic fluid derived stem cells, these are only women who have undergone an elective C-section, so the mother and the baby go one way, amniotic fluid and placental tissue that's normally discarded as medical waste is instead sent to an uh, accredited tissue lab. Uh, there they will undergo extensive testing as far as um, looking for any possible fungal, bacteria, viral infection. After a rigorous, lengthy procedure um, in verifying the sample is clean, then it is authorized to be used for treatment in uh, human conditions. Let's talk about what happens during a stem cell injection versus any other procedure. Fortunately, it's much like regular corticosteroid shots, joint injections that patients have already experienced. The patient will come into the clinic, be evaluated, and if they decide to proceed with the stem cell injection, we'll bring them to the treatment room, they'll be the skin where the, of the, above the area where we're going to inject is um, cleaned in a sterile fashion, and then we use an ultrasound to, number one, guide us um, in making sure we get the exact placement of the needle that we want. In addition to doing a limited evaluation of the area, sometimes we'll find a patient has excessive swelling or a blood collection. The skin is going to be anesthetized. We have a cool spray, we'll numb it down. And essentially the needle is the same size as you would have for a regular steroid shot. It's no more painful than a regular cortisone injection. And the, the biggest potential side effect is patients might have some post-injection soreness, which we usually recommend a topical cream or possibly some cold or heat. Um, but it's really no different than a normal injection procedure. The big question is, what kind of problems can stem cells help? Um, anytime, anywhere in your body, you're suffering from inflammation. So if you have bursitis or you have arthritis in the shoulder or the knee or the hip, um, if you suffer from repetitive use injuries, if you've done uh, assembly line work or anything where you're doing the same motion over and over again, it's likely you're at risk to develop some kind of a tendinitis, tendinopathy. Um, and so if you have burning, aching, stinging pain, or you've got some reactive muscle spasm and your, your range of motion is limited, um, stem cells can help you. We are able to put the stem cell and growth factor injections really into any joint in the body as well as the uh, connecting tissues as far as the ligament and tendons go, as well as muscle tissue. We've seen, oh, on average, 80% response rate with the stem cell therapy. So what's the biggest risk with stem cell therapy? What's the worst case outcome? Fortunately, beyond the normal post-injection soreness, the biggest risk is that it wouldn't work. Otherwise, we don't have the same potential side effects that you might get with corticosteroids such as flushing, insulin uh, changes, swelling, rash. As long as we prepare the site in a sterile fashion, we almost eliminate the risk of infection. So bottom line, what's the worst could happen? You get a shot that doesn't really work. 
So one of the exciting things about stem cell is that it allows us to avoid surgery in many cases. I tell patients, number one, we'd like to avoid surgery in all cases. Um, number two, even if down the road you did need surgery, yet we can delay that for some time, you might have um, a better outcome because they've designed a more minimally invasive surgery, faster healing times, um, uh, less loss of time off work. So you're interested, you wonder if you're a candidate, your next step is to come in for a free consultation, be examined, speak with a physician, and talk about whether you are a good candidate to move ahead with stem cell therapy. So long story short, who's a good candidate for stem cell therapy? Probably you. I'm Dr. Ed Nash, I'm a physiatrist, and I'm excited and eager to work with you, get you into the workshop, teach you more, see how we can help you get back into the game of life.